Cyberpunk 2077. This is probably the most anticipated game of this decade. It's hard to remember that huge level of hype around any other video game. Each news about Cyberpunk 2077 is a big thing in newsfeed around the world of gaming. Each leaked shot gets more attention than some completed projects. Each new trailer, a new demo, is a celebration with the expectation to see or hear something unimaginable. Without exaggeration, millions of people around the world are waiting for this game. There is just a couple of days left until the game is released. Those who have not yet prepared for it have very little time left. And now it's time to learn about the cyberpunk universe if you still haven't watched all the videos about it on YouTube. What kind of world is this? What happened in it? Why is everything there so gloomy and desperate? Why did people descend to such a low level of society, having a very high level of development of technologies? Why do corporations have so much power? Why is there crime everywhere on the streets? What are these gangs? What is the Night City? And who is this strange man with a silver cybernetic hand? We know that this is Keanu Reeves, but who is this character and why should his appearance tell us anything? In this video I will try to answer all these questions in detail and tell you the incredibly interesting prehistory of the world of Cyberpunk 2077. It will not be easy to do in about 20-25 minutes, but I'll try. Well, let's get started. So where did Cyberpunk come from? Much of the Cyberpunk materials begin with the words of the creator Mike Pondsmith. At the end of the acidic 80s, he collected the atmosphere of the decade in a guidebook and began selling it in the form of pen and paper games. In a contrary to a popular belief, Cyberpunk 2020 is not the whole game, but only its second edition. There were three of them in total, not counting a rather entertaining spin-off. But 2020 turned out to be the most famous and weighty, the history in which formed the basis of Cyberpunk 2077. The name Cyberpunk itself has a double meaning here. In this world, Cyberpunk is not a genre, but you. You are a cybernetic punk. The first edition introduced players to a brave new world. Augmentations there were not unusual, but no one really knew how to live with it. Everything is in full swing, corporations are gaining immense strength and power, and Cyberpunk stands at the very edge of this world. As we already know, Cyberpunk is you. The second edition retained the features of the first, but advanced the prehistory of the world and the development of technology. The Cyberpunk 2020 was quite popular and Mr. Pondsmith released as many as three editions, which just described the fourth corporate war that led to an almost apocalypse. When creating, Mr. Pondsmith was inspired by Blade Runner and the books of the classics of the genre. And on the way he created a real monument of his era. The heroes certainly wear stylish leather jackets and black glasses, and the power of rock is elevated to absolute. In the core book itself, apart from the description of the mechanics, the main rules of behavior are spelled out. Style is more important than substance. Style is everything. Go to the limits, break the rules. From the first pages, the game encourages rebellion. At the forefront of cyberpunk is the conflict between corporations and crowds of ordinary citizens who find themselves below the poverty line. Low life is one of the obligatory features of cyberpunk as a genre, as well as borrowing from Japanese culture, hence the samurai rock band and the villain of this world, the Arasaka Corporation. Initially, the players were transported not to the 20th, but to the 13th year of the 21st century. And this was the transitional period when technology, according to Mr. Pondsmith's plan, sharply cut into everyday life, and this everyday life is rather grim. So what happened in this dystopian cyberpunk world? The history of the cyberpunk universe turns away from the history of our real world somewhere in the late 80s and early 90s of the last century. It all starts with the fact that USSR does not completely disintegrate, only Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania get independence from the Union that retains all other territories. Following Gorbachev, the ruler of the Soviet Union abandons ideology and becomes more open to the countries of Europe. Thanks to this, the state turns into a leader in the region in economic, scientific and social development. At the same time, Europe is going through hard times. 
Its borders are overwhelmed with waves of migrants, the economies of most countries are weak, and the only way out of this bad situation was the creation of a European economic community and the introduction of a new universal currency called the Euro-Dollar. Meanwhile, in the United States, real chaos is going on. Power is in the hands of the Union of Special Services, the NSA, CIA, FBI and DEA. The military initiates the invasion of the countries of Central America and in their attacks does not hesitate to use biological weapon of mass destruction, which not only kills people but also affects the plantations of coca and marijuana, which adversely affects the business of drug dealers. The local drug cartels, however, do not surrender without a fight. They strike back and decide on a desperate terrorist attack. Their man detonates a nuclear bomb in the very center of New York. A global economic crisis begins, due to which the United States literally disintegrate before our eyes. And there is no one to wage a war anymore. Europe is being attacked by new waves of migrants, and only the stability of the Euro-Dollar helps countries to stay afloat in the absence of a real power. In the United States, the army and the biggest military equipment corporation Militech take everything into their hands. Similar events are taking place all over the world. In Europe, the EBM corporation begins to dominate. In Soviet Union, the entire economy rests on soft oil corporation. All spheres of life around the world are beginning to be controlled by the corresponding corporations. There are dozens of them. And without them, everything will fall apart in a moment. But the fact is that they act primarily in their own interests. And they are also fighting for power. Meanwhile, a real jumpstart begins in the development of science and technology. The arms race between corporations leads to the fact that humanity is rapidly moving into the world of cybernetics. The first human clone is created, a cyber modem which allows direct connection of the human brain to the global network and replacing limbs with their artificial counterparts is becoming commonplace. Naturally, all these replacements work even better than native body parts. Moreover, they can be upgraded. People get used to augmentation, and they also open up completely unimaginable possibilities. The implant market is growing to an enormous size, and all of this is controlled by the same corporations that monopolize everything they can get their hands on. They even start to have their own armies. Corporate wars break out, the purpose of which is the division of technology and influence in the world. The first war, then the second, then the third. Smaller corporations are being swallowed up by larger ones, and spheres of influence are increasingly distributed. The whole world is slowly getting used to this state of affairs. People learn to live in this reality. Now every area of life is controlled by some kind of corporation. And now from global events taking place in the world of cyberpunk, we turn to the most important for our history, the Night City and its regions. This city originated in the early 90s in the USA and was founded by an American businessman named Richard Knight, who bought land in the Gulf of Coronado. He dreamed of building a utopian city of dreams, Coronado City, and he almost succeeded. He took money for such a large-scale project from corporations, to which in return he gave power in certain areas of the future city of dreams. However, Richard Knight's plan was not destined to come true at least to the end. In 1998, he was killed by order of local crime syndicates. At the same time, the city survived, and very soon it only grew. In honor of the founder, it was renamed to Night City. The power in it, as elsewhere in the world, was quickly seized by corporations. But on the streets, various criminal groups, which together were called the crowd, began to brutally defend their rights. This mob started a real war against the corporations. And although they took over the city center and introduced tight control in the streets, the gangs responded by completely crushing the service industry and acquiring strong connections in the city police. The tough fight lasted for seven years and ended in almost complete victory of the crowd. The corporations have retained control over the center and some suburbs, erecting real fortresses there. But what was happening outside the walls of these fortified areas didn't bother them at all. The civil government could do almost nothing without its rich and powerful patrons. 
and the inhabitants of Night City were left to the mercy of a violent crowd. Quickly the city turned into a branch of hell on earth. Complete lawlessness and death have become integral attributes of the streets of Night City. There are almost no ordinary residents left. You are either with the crowd or against it and you will be destroyed. This disgrace lasted for several years, and this was enough to destroy a huge part of the infrastructure in some areas. However, over time the crowd began to want more, and became too much of a hindrance to corporations. Because of this, a regular army with aircraft and tanks was finally brought into the streets of the city. A real war broke out, which lasted for several years and led to the formal victory of the corporations. A puppet mayor was put at the head of Night City, and those who remained from the once mighty crowd hid in dark alleys, basements and dens. They continued to terrorize the streets, just trying not to cross the corporations too often. Gradually the remnants of the crowd split into separate clans, which very soon began to compete with each other. The struggle for underground and night streets clearly divided the city into six districts. The city center is a beautiful and prosperous neighborhood with skyscrapers, clean safe streets, elite establishments and wealthy inhabitants. Haywood district surrounding the central part of the city, which also seems to be safe, but in fact Haywood is the place where dirty deals with the trade in illegal substances and illegal business are being made. Santo Domingo is an industrial zone and the home to many workers. Few people interfere in the affairs of this area, as it provides the entire city with electricity and other resources. But there are plenty of dangers on the streets here too. Pacifica is the southernmost and poorest area. It was impossible to cope with crime on its streets, therefore corporations withdrew all the money out of it, leaving residents in poverty, filth, without work and means for the living. Westbrook is the opposite of Pacifica. A Japan town in Night City is a place of various casinos, brothels and unprecedented entertainment for wealthy tourists. Finally, in the northwest of the city is Watson, the Chinatown of the future with narrow streets, colorful neon signs and standard restaurants of oriental cuisine. It's better not to wander around Watson's quarters, there is too much risk of getting to the wrong place and getting into trouble. But if you know the right addresses, then you can find everything here, from sellers of unique illegal weapons to the black market of illegal implants. The wastelands outside the city are inhabited by some odd people, which closely interact with Night City, but at the same time are a little away from the bustle and problems of the big city. As a result, Night City with its structure of life has become a real magnet for all sorts of rebel who had no place in the civilized world, as well as the city of last chance for those who lost everything. If you know how to do something and you have nothing to lose, go to Night City, there will be job for everyone. The Fourth Corporate War Night City grew and became stronger. Corporations and their confrontations were getting tougher. Dissatisfaction with the global competition between mega-monsters from different spheres of life have only been growing. At one point everything had to explode. This explosion took place where no one expected. In 2021, two small European corporations specializing in the extraction of natural resources argued over a field in the ocean, the property of some third company, which could not withstand the pressure of competitors. In order to defend its interests, one of these structures made a deal with the Japanese military corporation Arasaka, while the other hired Arasaka's main competitor, the American corporation Militech. Considering that these two giant structures were just waiting for an excuse to start an open confrontation, the situation in the world flared up instantly. The fourth corporate war broke out. Unlike the first three, which were limited to a small town character and focused on the redistribution of resources of territory, this war became a real disaster for the entire cyberpunk world. The confrontation took place on all possible fronts, from real military clashes to use of weapons of mass destructions and global cyber attacks. Each site had its own army of netrunners, enhanced cybernetic hackers running the global net, who were connecting their consciousness to it and carrying out large-scale hacker attacks on each other's computer networks. They were changing the coordinates of warhead strikes, 
siphoning money and resources from the budgets of entire countries and trying to destroy the opposing netrunners. And the first fatal damage to the world was done in the global net. The genius netrunner Rage Bartmos, who fought on one of the parties to the conflict, caused the other side so much trouble that he was ordered to be destroyed at any cost. In the end, they managed to do so, but the genius left behind the data crash, a virus of an incredible power which was activated after his death. It was aimed at the entire network and soon the entire cyberspace was infested with many malicious applications, battle demons and other complex programs that almost destroyed the entire virtual world. The virus was stopped only at the last moment, but it caused fatal damage to the global network. The economies of most countries in this world collapsed after that. Chaos began. However, Arasaka and Militech did not even think about ending the war. None of them thought about the consequences. Large-scale production of resources necessary for the war began, and the planet itself reacted to this. It responded to humanity with floods, storms and acid rains. Cataclysms have become commonplace. Realizing that they could not survive otherwise, some countries finally refused to participate in the war in 2023. They began to seize by force the offices and enterprises of Arasaka and Milita corporations on their territory. The only one headquarters of the Arasaka corporation remained in the United States which was still owned by the Japanese. It was located in Night City. It was against this stronghold the Militech army decided to make its final strike. And here begins the story of Johnny Silverhand. His real name was Robert John Linder and he fought in Nicaragua for a long time. However, in 2003 Johnny deserted and settled in Night City, the best place for people like him to start a life from scratch. With his friends, Johnny started a rock band Samurai, and soon his hits were heard on all the streets of the city. In the songs, Johnny spoke on all topics sharply and directly in the language of the streets, and therefore they fell in love with him. The band's songs sounded all over the streets of the city. Each corporation wanted the Samurai to sing in their interests, but Johnny refused them all. He couldn't be bought for any money and didn't retreat in front of any threats. And then a woman appeared in his life. Her name was Alt Cunningham, and she was not like everyone else. Alt was a netrunner, the best in the city, who also created a unique artificial intelligence system. Cunningham came up with a program that monitored the intrusion into the internal network and unnoticed by a hacker copied his personality and memories after which it completely erased this very personality from the wearer's brain, rolling it back to the level of baby's development. All that remained was to interrogate the hapless hacker, who was forever stuck with his consciousness in virtual reality and no longer had access to his body. She named this virus the Soul Killer, an ingenious development, and such a valuable employee as Alt Cunningham was absolutely necessary for corporations which quickly learned about such an ultimate weapon. But she didn't want to cooperate with anyone voluntarily. Well, this is not a problem for a corporation. They are used to taking by force what they cannot get for money. In 2013, after another concert, Johnny and Alt were attacked by mercenaries of the Arasaka Corporation. The rocker was beaten to a pulp and Alt was kidnapped. When Johnny regained consciousness, he fell into a rage and directed all his strength to return his beloved. He gathered friends, enlisted the help of fans and began a fight against the corporation. Johnny asked his ex-girlfriend Rogue and her partner to help get Alt back, paid a couple of fixers to spread rumors about a samurai concert in a park next to the Arasaka's headquarters, and miraculously making their way into the Arasaka under the whistle of the crowd, they found only her body. The corporation wanted her to teach the soul killer how to serve the net on its own. When they got what they wanted from her, they burned her own brains out. When Johnny found her, her heart was barely beating. He carried Alt's body in his arms, but her mind was screaming after him from the other side of the monitors. For 10 years Johnny hatched plans for revenge, until Arasaka set itself up. In 2023, 
In the midst of the fourth corporate war between Militech and Arsaka, Johnny, no longer having any other hope, enlisted the help of Militech and led the strike team. Having broken through the Arasaka's headquarters in battle, they downloaded all data from the corporate network, including the Cunningham's soul, launched a virus against the soul killer and began to upload Arasaka's secret information to the public. But unfortunately, Johnny was not destined to get out of there. In one of the corridors, he was ripped to shreds by the bullets of a cyborg named Adam Smasher. But his squad succeeded with the task and even managed to leave. And soon after that, Militech hit the Arasaka building with a nuclear warhead, blowing the entire corporate center of Night City. Johnny Silverhand was a true leader of the street, and in the end, all that remained of him were his reputation and his legend. The body was never found, and after this blow, Night City had to be rebuilt for decades. The war ended, but despite the formal defeat of Arasaka, there were no winners. The consequences of the war were irreparable. Millions of dead and homeless people, countries in ruins, cyberspace and the entire world economy destroyed. It will take decades to recover. But that's another story. The sad story of the brave hero was over, but the rest of the world has not ceased to exist. The corporations withstood that and over time they completely regained their influence. The state survived, just as Night City survived even a nuclear strike. Decades later, life in it returned to normal. Its corporations and gangs got stronger, got their names and began to act in their own interests, controlling various aspects of the life in Night City. First we'll talk about gangs that have seized control of the city's streets, similar to the crowd that we talked about earlier. By 2077, eight major illegal formations in the city itself and one in the wastelands stood out among them. Probably the craziest gang is the Maelstrom Gang. Settled in the industrial areas of the city, its members are obsessed with cybernetic implants and try to get rid of everything human in their bodies as much as possible. Because of this, many of them are prone to cyberpsychosis and in fact are completely insane and unpredictable. Killing a person is easy for them. They do not burden themselves with moral norms and any rules. That's why so few people want to cooperate with them. Nevertheless, it is Maelstrom's engineers who often create the most amazing implants, for which all the corporations of the city are then lined up. There are also several purely ethnic gangs. The Valentino's gang is guided by a moral code and centuries-old traditions. They worship God and the Virgin Mary. These gangsters have their own style. The core of the organization is made up of Hispanics, who are densely settled in the Haywood. Japanese gang called Tiger Claws are in charge of everything in Westbrook. It is worth noting that they were able to restore relative order in their area and brought it to a good state. Their area offers a lot of entertainment, but does not tolerate curious strangers much. Voodoo Boys are the best netrunners in Night City. Ethnically, their gang is mainly Haitians. They are located in Pacifica, and for them it is like their own island cut off from the rest of the world. That who steps on their land without an invitation should be very careful. Voodoo Boys, although not as aggressive as others, can hack a brain and prepare fate worse than death to an enemy. In contrast to the Voodoo Boys, there is a gang called Animals. Absolute psychos who live only for bringing their bodies to the maximum of physical strength. Everything else is too difficult for them, but it is better not to get in their way. Not the least powerful gang is Sixth Street, a group created by veterans of the Fourth Corporate War. Their main motivation was to restore justice in the city, but the concept of this very justice has been greatly distorted over time. Sixth Street's activities include robbery, extortion and arms smuggling and the members of this organization consider themselves to be true patriots of the country. And the last gang of the big city bears the eloquent name Moxis, and it's the youngest organization among the rest. It was founded only in 2076, after the death of Elizabeth Borden, everyone called her Lizzie, and she was a brothel owner and a prostitute in Night City. Elizabeth was distinguished by the fact that she protected the workers of her institution from harassment and bullying by unscrupulous clients. 
and once, in an attempt to protect her girls, she crossed serious people from the Tiger Claws gang. For this she was killed. All brothels in the city realized that they needed to learn how to defend themselves from gangs. And so the people involved in sex business in Night City took matters into their own hands. They started their own gang, called themselves Moxes, and quickly proved to the whole city that they should be reckoned with. To cap this list of gangs, let's mention Nomads. This class actually includes many gangs sharing this kind of living. Gangs of wastelanders living outside or far away from big cities, according to their own laws and rules. Nomads value ties of kinship and families the most. It is very important for them to maintain at least an imaginary independence from the cities and show they are different from the rest of the gangs. However, their methods are often as bloody as those of others. But what can you do? This is cyberpunk world. All of these gangs are of course powerful, but there is something much bigger above them. This is of course corporations. Everything from a soda machine on the street to the tallest skyscraper in the city belongs to them and is divided between them. In this breathtaking world of the future, private companies began to perform even municipal functions. You call an ambulance, a trauma team international squad arrives. You report a murder, an Arasaka squad comes to you. The main power in Night City is Arasaka and Militech megacorps. Arasaka Security is a Japanese zaibatsu, the biggest company in the world specializing in security services. They are not just a private corporate army, but also one of the biggest arms manufacturer. Its CEO Saburo Arasaka raves about the grandeur of Japan and is ready to do anything to make that happen. The American corporation Militech is Arasaka's main enemy and competitor. They are the world supplier of weapons for special forces and armies. In contrast to Saburo Arasaka, the founder of Militech seeks to make America great again. Militech has a corporate army, strong ties to the US government, and the United States is their biggest partner and customer. The Soviets of oil is a monopoly on the oil production market. They own most of the oil fields. But this is a doubtful achievement since the world of cyberpunk has switched to Chew 2, the new synthetic grain-based alcohol that became the world's standard combustible car fuel. Raven Micro Cybernetics is the main corporation of Night City for the production of augmentations and implants. Trauma Team International is the world's prime healthcare provider for citizens. They literally won't stop at nothing to save a customer's life, even if they have to shoot everyone who blocks his body. However, for their services, you will have to fork out for a pretty big sum of money. Network News 54 and World News Service are masters of the media market. The wars for the media space and the ability to promote the views in favor of this or that corporation to the public is always in demand, especially in 2077. We can list many other names for a very long time. There are dozens of huge corporations in that world. And everyone who has grabbed for himself a share of any market will never give it up. This is how the cyberpunk world survived until 2077. And here a completely new but no less interesting and important story begins. The story of a character named V. A character who is looking for his place in this world. V got a very responsible and important assignment from one of the corporations. The target is the chip of immortality. V does not know where this dangerous adventure will take him, but he acts. He's going to have an amazing adventure in a cruel world that does not tolerate weakness. And that's all for today. Remember that this was just a small fraction of the huge background and lore of the world of Cyberpunk 2077. If you want to really immerse yourself to this world's prehistory and lore, I'd strongly recommend to read Cyberpunk 2020 and Cyberpunk Red rulebooks and Cyberpunk 2077 art book before playing the game. This will give you an understanding of many lore-related things and significantly enhance your experience in the game. And now we can already start counting not days but hours before the release. So let's hope this game is really going to be breathtaking as Keanu Reeves himself promised us. For now, hit the like if you enjoyed this video and of course subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon so not to miss my next videos on Cyberpunk 2077. 
and let me tell you, there'll be a hell of a lot of them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon.